Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is the old captain, the old captain coming to you live from Crooked Creek with this week's hymn of the week. Um, today, I'm, I'm in the canoe, I guess, and I'm on it, in it. I've got three canoes that sit in a lift here on the dock, and I turn a switch and go down and turn it back, go up. So I'm just kind of just a swinging this this time. I'm not really in the water, but I just thought I'd sit here and <clears throat> relax a little bit instead of being up the creek. So hope you'll bear with me there. Uh, we have concluded our story and our study of Genesis. And in our Sunday school literature, we have now begun the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles. Some folks would prefer for it to be called the Acts of the Holy Spirit. And um, sometimes we kind of shy away from the term Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost. But um, the, the Holy Spirit is as much a part of the Trinity as is Jesus or God the Father. It is a person of the Holy Spirit. And it's nothing to, to run from, it's nothing to be, um, nothing to be really threatened by because it's in his strength that we do the things that we, we do. Holy Spirit's job is to um, convict us, to guide us, and to encourage us and do the things we need to do in order to do God's will. Um, my belief is that the Holy Spirit comes into our heart the moment that we accept Jesus as our Savior. The moment we're saved, I believe that the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in our heart and he's there forever and he's there to do the things that I, that I shared, shared with you. I wanna um, just kinda give you a little introduct, few introductory comments about the book of Luke. It's the third longest book of the New Testament. Matthew and Luke are the two longer books. Um, Dr. Luke, Luke was a physician, so Dr. Luke wrote both Luke and Acts, and together those two books compromise about, not compromise, comprise about 30% of the New Testament. Luke, again, was a physician, and he was a traveling companion of Paul. Um, you don't hear a lot of we up until about halfway through Acts and all of a sudden we did this and we did that and we saw this. So he has firsthand accounts and then accounts that are not firsthand. He was an eyewitness to many accounts and he had an eye for detail, especially when he talks about healings or sicknesses and anything medically related we know that that was his area of expertise. Another important factor is that the book of Acts covers about a, a 30 year span of time. It begins at Christ's ascension back to heaven and it ends with Paul's imprisonment in Rome. So um, in other words, it, it kind of started in Jerusalem and it went to Judea Samaria and to the ends of the earth and that is um, pretty much Rome during that time same same thing as the Great Commission that's what that's what we're to do I want to read the first three verses in um, in chapter one um, where I come from they would call um, some of these sentences run on sentences because they go forever. I mean, comma, 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 comma. And, and I mean, all one sentence. Now folks, it's difficult for me to make a sentence longer than four or five words, but these folks can go uh, indefinitely. But anyway, <clears throat> in both Luke and Acts, Luke is writing and keeping record for a fellow named Theophilus. 
Now, we're not going to get into that this morning. You might want to Google it or do a Bible study on Theophilus. But um, at any rate, I'm going to read the first three verses, and it's basically one sentence. So if I have to breathe there once in a while, be patient with me. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Whew. Now, not only was that three verses, that was one sentence. That's amazing. And a lot is said there. Uh, the things that I want to bring out here is it says that Jesus began to both teach and to... Um, um, do and teach and and that was his mission I mean obviously his mission was to come to die on the cross for us but basically at this time he 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 began his ministry now um, I've been to track mates and helped run off track mates where a, where a relay race you had a baton and you ran the first leg of the baton and then you handed it off to the next person, and they ran some. They handed it off to the next person, and they ran some. It's called a relay race. Well, if Jesus began his ministry, he passed the baton on to others. He passed the baton on to the disciples. The disciples, in turn, passed it on to new believers, who in turn passed it on to new believers, who in turn passed it on to new believers. And somewhere along the line, someone passed it on to us. Now, what was it that they were passing on? Well, it's pretty clear. They were passing on the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the gospel consists of the fact that Jesus came that he, he died on the cross for our sins, he was buried, he was resurrected, and then he ascended to the Father where he now sits with um, the Father interceding for us, and one day he'll come again. And if we believe that, and if we will express that, then we will be saved. That's, that's the crux of the gospel. We have to realize, know that Jesus is the Son of God, know that he died for our sins, even though he was sinless, that he was resurrected, and that he will come again. And with those thoughts in mind, if we accept that and believe it and confess him as Jesus as Lord, then we will be disciples. We will be witnesses to people that we come in contact with. Just like these disciples, we are to share our faith. We start out in our Samaria, I mean in our Jerusalem. I started out in Jacksonville, Florida. I wound up in Rome. Not Rome, Italy, but Rome, Georgia. And from there, we came to Douglas County. And from Douglas County, we came here to Putnam County. So um, we have gone from here to here to here. And hopefully in those places, we have been... Um, witnesses for our Lord in those places, and hopefully you are too. Um, our song today is a very um, famous song, very popular song, and it's all about the person that the whole gospel is about. It's all about what the book of Acts is about, and it's about Jesus, the one who died on the cross for us. and. Only in his death, burial, and resurrection do we find true victory. And so this morning, our hymn is Victory in Jesus. The words and the music were written by E.M. Bartlett, 1885 to 1941. Three verses. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 57, he gives us victory 
through our Lord Jesus Christ. I hope that you'll hang with us as we go through the book of Acts because um, there are some wonderful stories, there are some wonderful miracles, but it all points us to Jesus. So we're going to try to sing the first three verses here. And like I said, it's a very familiar song. And even if you don't have your book, if you got it, it's 426. But otherwise, maybe you can sing along with us regardless. <clears throat> I heard an old, old story, how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again, and cause the blind to see. And then I cried, Dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Now, folks, this, um, this third verse, uh, as a child, I sang this at Main Street Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Florida, my Jerusalem, and it didn't mean so much. I mean, I was just a kid. But now that I have rounded second, rounded third, and heading for home, it means a whole lot more. The third verse says, I heard about a mansion he has built for me, and glory, and I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story, and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Now, folks, when the old captain passes, you just don't you worry about me, because I will be with Jesus in heaven on those streets of gold in my mansion, praising God for what he's done for me. I hope you can say the same. Third verse. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory, and I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Jesus began his ministry, and then he passed it on to the disciples. Then the disciples passed it on to others. Those others passed it on to even more others, and eventually it was brought to me. Eventually it was brought to you. 
So what is our charge? What is our responsibility? Do we have to be a theologian or a Bible expert to spread the gospel, to tell people what Jesus has done for us? No. All we got to do is know the basics. And the basics, again, are the fact that Jesus, who knew no sin, died on the cross for us to pay a debt that we couldn't pay, but only he could. He died on the cross. He was buried. He was resurrected after three days. He ascended to the Father, and he is coming back home. In order to have that victory in Jesus that we've sung about, you've got to believe that. You've got to trust Jesus in your heart. You have to confess him with your mouth. And if you do those things, the Bible says you will be saved. And you can count your many blessings that you have victory and that you will indeed have that mansion in glory. Um, I look forward to sharing excerpts from Acts as we go along through these next weeks and months. And I thank you for following um, our Crooked Creek Hymn of the Week. I'm certainly no theologian. I'm certainly no Bible scholar. But uh, it's kind of like being an, uh, knowing about art or knowing about things that are beautiful and pretty. I don't know a lot about it, but I know what I like. And I know what I love. And I love God's Word, and I love Him as well. Thank you so much for joining us for this week's Crooked Creek Hymn of the Week. Hope to see you next time. I hope you have a great week. You take care, and you come see us if you can here on Crooked Creek. God bless.